Hello everyone. Uh, in US territory, the geotextile filter cannot be used uh, in the critical dam structure, such as next to the, the dam core material, but uh, can be used in non-critical dam substructure like a tow drain, and where that geotextile filter can be easily uh, accessed and uh, retrofitted whenever that drainage function is deteriorated. Our uh, geotextile filter must be excellent filter media, especially to save the that installation time and the construction cost compared to the granular filter. The, however, the filter designer should know that what's the pros and cons of a geotextile filter, especially when it comes to handle the problemat problematic soil, such as uh, non, non cohesive and well graded type soil, the tailing material and the silt sand and clay sand. So in this chapter, in video clip, I would like to share the, my research outcome for the geotextile filter application to the detailing material and the high silt content of sand. Geotextile filter has a two different categories, the woven type and non-woven geotextile, which is differentiated by the manufacturing process or weaving types. So as you can see, the woven geotextile has a very uniform and uh, regular opening size, whereas uh, non-woven geotextile shows the very irregular shapes of uh, opening size and also non-uniform distribution pattern. For filter for force, uh, the non-woven geotextile is uh, more frequently used because the it shows better filter performance compared to that non uh, woven geotextile. So non woven geotextile usually generally shows the over 60% of porosity and the low specific uh, surface area to compare to the granular filter. And geotextile filter is cannot avoid that the clogging fate. Uh, so, geotextile filter also has three different factor to imp impacting on the clogging process: the soil type parameter, and geotextile parameter, and hydrologic condition. Um, for the soil parameter, the grain size distribution, and the fine, such as the silt and the clay size content and uh, the compaction degree of the base soil. And geotextile parameter is the apparent opening size and the surface condition, especially differentiated by the, the additional the calendar process. And also the fabric thickness, uh, the belly for the needle punch the non oven geotextile. And hydraulic conditions, the saturation degree and the hydraulic gradient level plays an important role to determine that the filter consequence. So I have investigated the geotextile filter performance using laboratory test. It's called the flexible wall gradient ratio test. It's the FWGR and also the rapid retention test uh, called abbreviated called the uh, RRT. So a flexible work gradient ratio test is known as the best available technique to examine the deck clogging process of geotextile on real time. But it takes a uh, lot of times so or maybe up to the seven days. To compensate that uh, long uh, test period, so I also test using the RRT, a rapid retention test. And uh, this is a very efficient way to quickly measure, check the compatibility of the candidate geotextile product for the, the site soil and the site hybrid condition. So I actually uh, can get the test, uh, some conclusion uh, to which the geotextile product is the best working for the fine sand and the tailing material from the that the level test output.
This schematic plot is uh, showing and uh, the configuration of that setup of a rapid retention test device. So as you can see, is uh, using the, the four inch diameter cell and uh, and, and six inch diameter of the, the pressure chamber. And uh, each the cell unit is uh, consists of this and the module and the cap and the pedestal and the container which is used to containerize that uh, passing fine uh, from the that the fil passing the filter media. And the above metal sieve and put some candidate to your textile and the place also that candidate the soil. And uh, put uh, on top of that sample and uh, we are uh, using the shield ring and uh, confined in that whole the uh, test unit. And so with the latex membrane, it's applied on wrapping the whole the unit cell and applied that uh, the water pressure and confining pressure. So it has a uh, allow, uh, doesn't allow any the leakage, uh, from the, the side, uh, uh, from the side of the unit cell. Uh, this diagram shows at the difference of the clogging fate, the piping and the breaching and the blinding. Um, the piping is kind of a, is a, is a failure case for doesn't meet that the retention criteria of a filter. So as you can see, it, uh, for most of fine particle, uh, initially starting from the that, uh, the dot line and the initial, the, Green size distribution curve, but uh, all the fine particle and upstream area is passed through to that filter media. So you can see the void ratio is increased. So consequently, the all the hydroconductivity it reaches that at the, it uh, is close to the filter media. So so it fails actually the retention function of a uh, uh, filter to function. Uh, the criteria and breaching is a it it's a kind of shows a successful case and the fine particle is in the in the some the upstream area uh, suppressed by the at the by the self filtration structure um, so eventually and the drainage function also satisfy it uh, slightly increased and close to that filter media but it just uh, suppressed and continuing in the uh, in between the that the base of soil and the filter media, okay. and the breaching is it's a Apache case of a piping, and the old pine particle it will be eventually trapped in the interface of the filter media. So that accumulation is reduced that the void ratio in the near interface. So, so eventually the drainage function is deteriorated at the continuously as the testing time is progress. So the filter fate is actually can classify those three cases to two, the failure case, piping and blinding, and the successful case as breaching. And so the, from the rapid retention test, we just uh, indirectly measure that system hydroconductivity. So we actually uh, could know, can, could know that uh, the filter fate, if uh, we have consistent uh, system hydroconductivity increment, so we, we call this is a piping case. And it system hydroconductivity is a slightly the increment at the initial point value, uh, initial point, but uh, at the time progress in the is converged to some the stabilized value K. So that we call all the breaching. And uh, system hydroconductivity is uh, decreased down and uh, but how rapidly the decrement is happened. So it's a slowly decreasing happen is a clogging, internal clogging. And if it's a very rapidly decrement to happen is we call it the blinding. So as I mentioned earlier, the breaching formation is very important to get it to successful the filter consequence of a geotextile filter. But um, for geotextile filter case is a very uh, hard to find that uh, the idea, the spec for the producing this type of separate filtration formation compared to the, the granular filter. 
And this schematic plot is a compared to uh, the woven and non-woven geotextile at the structure. So as you mentioned earlier, the woven geotextile is very limited uh, the internal uh, space. So it doesn't allow any some the capture space for the fine particle. But the non-woven geotextile, it especially for needle punch the geotextile, is allow have some the room to retain the some fine particle inside the geotextile. So that's the big difference between the woven and non-woven geotextile. So that's why actually non-woven geotextile use the uh, more brief country use the filter media, especially for fine particle uh, soil and uh, the t tailing material. And this diagram shows that the ones that the fine particle clothed at the top surface that eventually the impact on the that uh, uh, the clogging degree of the below the sub uh, geotextile fi fabrics. So it kind of is some kind of a chain reaction. And uh, we call the, this a T sub E is an elementary the geotextile thickness. And the geotextile, the surface also uh, plays important role, especially for the, the gap grade soil. So gap grade soil is a, is a fine particle that is very susceptible to the migration uh, with uh, the CPG flow. And so by calendaring, actually, that's a two different uh, surface natures uh, shows. At the needle punch digital textile, it doesn't have any calendaring process. But heat bond digital textile, after calendaring process, it actually sustains at the flat surface. So that actually got a big uh, advantage to allow the, uh, the open channel for the, the between the set up coarse particle and, uh, and the geotextile filter. So that allows actually the fine particle migrate from the that upper soil is easily passed through the that filter media. And I tested also that uh, compressibility of a non needle punch to non of geotextile. And uh, I compared that compressibility uh, differenti differentiation by the that, uh, thickness of the needle punch to geotextile. So from the conclusion, uh, from the, the test result, I could note that uh, compressibility is, uh, is uh, higher for the thin geotextile. Uh, so so, so I'm going to explain the, how that uh, the different uh, the compressibility impact on the, the filter uh, performance in the in the next chap uh, next slide. So this is a kind of a schematic plot compared to the thin geotextile and thick geotextile and little punch the geotextile. So the thin geotextile is the ones that applied some upper load that actually knows the space and between the, the fabric. So, so that also thin geotextile much, much has a larger opening size compared to the thick geotextile. Uh, for fine particle material, especially the tailing material and the high fine content, it just uh, at high the higher gradient of line, and uh, that fine particle is just to access to only limited limited open uh, area. So we just call it a, a plugging. So thin geotextile is kind of possibly produce this type of uh, the very poor uh, range uh, performance compared to the that thick geotextile. So in the in my actual class, I provided this to students uh, this types of summary table, and uh, this summary table actually uh, allowed the student to use in the geotextile, and uh, depends on the uh, the test uh, the result for the clay content. And uh, and the uh, plasticity limit of the uh, base of soil, and uh, and the fine content. So what is the depends on that the test result, and then and students has a capability to the or uh, design at what the best performing the geotextile type. So heat bonded or little punch it, and the thickness also. So, and additionally, the compaction degree is, uh, is beneficial or non beneficial. Okay, so this is, uh, is just an example 